Hi, I'm Lauren Green, and you're in the Strategy Room. In just a short time, Donald Trump will be sworn in as the 45th President of the United States. And one of the keys to his winning the White House was the support of evangelicals, creating an evangelical advisory board. And that board will continue to function beyond January 20th. One of the members of the board is Dr. Richard Land, president of the Southern Evangelical Seminary. And he joins me now to talk about the Trump presidency and how faith, religious liberty, and politics will play out in the next administration. Welcome, Dr. Land. Thank you. Good to be with you. Happy New Year. Well, Happy New Year to you, too. Thanks so much. So what kind of advice have you given Donald Trump? Well, um, you know, the first piece of advice that I gave him when I agreed to serve on the advisory board was, if you really want evangelicals to feel more comfortable voting for you, pick Mike Pence as your vice president. Now, I'm not the only person who gave him that advice, but I'm glad he took it because I've worked with Mike Pence for 12 years when he was in Congress uh, when I was working with the uh, ERLC, and we had no stronger ally and no more wise counsel than Mike Pence. And the fact that he's been the chairman of the uh, transition team, I think, is showing up in the people that have been picked. Um, I, I, I just can't tell you how delighted I am that Mike Pence is serving as vice president. Well, I want to re read a poll here because uh, one of the questions in the poll is asking uh, do, how, Trump, how qualified do you think Trump is to serve as president. And I think the two numbers we pay attention to is of all adults, 44% said he's qualified and 52% and, uh, say he's not qualified. But the big number to take uh, into this poll is white evangelicals, 75% believe Trump is qualified and 22% said he was not qualified. Uh, I know that the, uh, the advisory board is going to go beyond January 20th. How are you going to tap into the support of white evangelicals or all evangelicals uh, during the Trump administration? Well, the way I see our role is to give him uh, advice and counsel, that's what he asked for, about the things that evangelicals are concerned about and the things that evangelicals and other people of conservative faith want him to do uh, in restraining the federal judiciary and appointing people to the federal judiciary who are strict constructionists, original intent jurists. We want lots of mini Scalia's, uh, mini Scalia's all over the federal judiciary. And uh, if he does that, um, it will, of course, um, help to restore the rule of law by the people instead of the rule of law by unelected judges who have been trying to impose um, their will upon the American people. Um, and I think that, uh, you know, things like um, uh, supporting the defunding of Planned Parenthood, um, the, the fact that he says to us, I'm going to have your back when it comes to religious liberty issues. Uh, frankly, evangelicals and other people of conservative faith have not felt that the executive branch had their back in the yeah. last eight years. You know, uh, you said that uh, you advised him to choose Mike Pence as a vice president. Did, did the board have any input into Trump's cabinet picks? Well, we, we were asked for um, recommendations. Uh, and, and some of those people that have been recommended have, have uh, been named. Uh, I don't want to claim, you know, you know what Ronald Reagan used to say, there's no telling what you can get done in Washington if you don't insist on taking credit for it. Um, <laughs> but I, I got to tell you this. Um, I have been far more pleased than I expected to be by the nominees that have been put forth so far. And I've worked with every administration uh, from Reagan onward, and I've never had an administration that has been as solicitous of getting personnel recommendations from uh, conservative evangelicals and conservative Catholics than this uh, transition team has been. I mean, I've been asked on five separate occasions to, to uh, present them with resumes mm -hmm. of people for them to consider for policy positions at the first, second, and third levels of the administration. Very interesting stuff. You know, and I keep hearing um, that evangelicals are really looking to, uh, to Trump as a sort of protector in chief, not, you know, just, you know, you know regarding uh, uh, mm -hmm. religious liberty, bringing in conservative judges. I mean, how confident are you that that's going to continue throughout his presidency? Well, as confident as I am with any politician, uh, I remember Jesse Helms once told me, he said, politicians are like children. Um, they do what you inspect, not what you expect. And um, there's an element of truth there. Um, you know, we, we, we're not going to give blind allegiance to anybody. 
Um, but, you know, he has kept his promises so far. One of the big litmus tests is going to be who he appoints, uh, who he nominates to uh, replace uh, Justice Scalia. Because, as you know, the Supreme Court is very delicately balanced right now. And um, if he picks one, from the, one of the people from those 21 that were recommended to him, I mean, you know, the people who were doing the vetting on those judges, now, you know, they think I'm liberal. <laughs> I, mean, I, mean, I mean, these people are very strict, constructionist, original intent um, yeah. people. And, and, and the people they recommended, all of them would make supreme, just superb Supreme Court justices. You know, one of the criticisms, and this is my last question, one of the criticisms of the Obama administration um, is that they went, he went far too far to the left and far too quickly. And it alienated so many people who would have been w willing to work with them. Um, do conservatives run the risk of doing the same thing with a sort of uh, sliding with a lot of uh, evangelical conservatives? Well, I hope not. I mean, you know, I understand. I, I think that was a very fair criticism. You know, Mr. Obama's position was um, uh, we had elections. Elections have consequences. I won. If you remember that, that infamous summit that he had on Obamacare, and um, basically they told um, Paul Ryan to sit down and shut up, and they told John McCain, you know, hey, I won, John. So be quiet. And what they got was a catastrophe uh, for, for which no Republican voted. Uh, I remember I was in a Fox News green room with Bob Beckel uh, right after that was passed. And, and I said, look, Bob, it doesn't work. It's not going to work. And he said, I don't care if it works. Wow. We've, been trying to, we've been trying to get uh, uh, government control of medicines in 1946. And I don't care if it works. Well, that's the kind of approach that leads to disaster. So I'm hoping... I'm hoping that there will be more bipartisan uh, efforts in, in this Congress. Uh, every major piece of successful social legislation in the last century has been passed with significant bipartisan support. And I think the same temptation has to be resisted in this next Congress that was too often not resisted in the last Congress, and that is the, 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 the center left and the center right have got to form a coalition against the extreme left and the extreme right. All right. I want to thank you so much, Dr. Richard Land. Thank you. And for more information on all things politics, go to foxnews.com. I'm Lauren Green, and thanks for watching.